Yeah. Welcome back to Chill Stories with Sam and Dan. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so we're hey, what's up, guys? Time, uh, with the uh, thing actually not being in freaking English in the starting <laughs> thing, so. I can't do any crazy voices because my parents are trying to sleep. But, um. <laughs> I'll do my best. Okay. All right. I died at the so Crystal not, Skull, dude. Yeah, we have <laughs> fucking Vietnam mom, like, <laughs> like, balls in the past. I'm like, boom! Like, going past the and shit. Like, she's just like, 20 push ups! <laughs> going to bed, how would you want to, bitch? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my worst is like military time. Okay, also, uh, fucking, uh, what is it? Uh, I can't see anything. I just see no, your. No, you can't. No, I just see your, uh, Oh, that's all I want to do. Little avatar there. There you go. Yep. All right. Uh, evil beneath the ground. Let's that's go. We're going. Yeah, we got this one. Madison and Infinite Loop and Ouija. So these are the Ouija. last all story right. collection all that right, we cool. have done. <laughs> I wonder if that background picture will come into play. Yep, it looks like it will. Fuck my life. You are, a, you are a goth university student with no friends, and you join a school trip to a lake in the forest near it. If you decide to wander in the forest at night, you will find a bear. You will find bear footprints. <laughs> Rar. <laughs> Those are coming from a black hole with a ladder. You will descend down, or will you descend down? Sorry. We'll play. You will beneath the ground. Of course, it's fucking laggy. You're a young university student. Who identifies as a goth? <laughs> That's something you identify as. I think it's something you're labeled as. You're <laughs> People think that you want to be alone. But in fact, you couldn't find someone. You felt affinity. Everyone is so distant from you. Nobody knows you. Uh, nobody you know listens to the music that you love. The Bauhas, this mortal coil, the Sisters of Mercy, etc. Etc. <laughs> I don't know any of those. <laughs> Blood on the dance floor, Sister Mary 3, yeah, yeah, nah. <laughs> you heard about a university field trip to a lake and the forest around it in autumn. There would be a picnic. Also, alcohol is permitted. You could bring your own drinks. You join the field trip. Not only maybe you could make some new friends, but you also love the nature. Especially when it's a cold season because you're a cold-hearted bitch. But of course, maybe these are your legs. Goth just a real friend. Goth girl with really hairy legs. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, you couldn't make new friends once again. During the two hours of bus travel, you found out every other student who joined the trip were already friends. They simply ignored you. You also didn't approach them. That's your fucking fault. <laughs> yeah. As a result, all of you could uh, all you could do during the bus trip was look outside the window or play games on your phone. While you listen to their joyful laughters. Oh, uh, what? You just mean their joyful laughter? <laughs> <laughs> so, Dan, uh, I, I meant to send something to you earlier, but I'll just explain it to you. Um, so, have you ever seen Machinima Inbox with Mr. Sark and APL? <laughs> no. Well, it's fucking glorious. So, there's an Easter <laughs> episode um, where Mr. Sark is explaining Easter. And um, he uh, he starts talking about, like... He goes like, well, to, to to tell the story of Easter, this is totally interrupting the fucking story that we're telling, but I just want to say this. Um, he goes like, to tell the story of Easter, you have to go back a couple days uh, before Easter. And APL's like, oh, okay. And uh, <laughs> he's like, he goes back to the uh, Last Supper, where uh, Jesus, Mary, Joseph, and the 12 disciples are sitting down. And uh, Jesus is like, well, you know, Everything's going on well and everything like that and like talking to the diocese and whatnot and then fucking, fucking, he goes like, well, Judas is going to betray me. I'm, I'm going to die in a couple days, guys. And everyone's like, oh, no, no, no. And Judas is like, I would never do that. And he's like, shut the fuck up. I'm Jesus. You're going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Judas is like, okay. And so a couple days, uh, well, so, so Judas goes and he, he, he fucking, he goes to the Romans and he's like, He's like, uh, yeah, yeah, I want Jesus dead. And then they're all like, yeah, yeah, so do we. And they go to the, they go to the ap 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 apothates or whatever. 
And they're like, yeah, we want Jesus dead too because he's lighter skinned. <laughs> so they, they fucking they fucking nail him to a cross at the top of a hill. <laughs> and he dies and then the, they, they fucking put him in a tomb. And a couple days later, he's like, oh man, I'm kind of bored in here. And, um, but he, but he, he asked God, like, if, if he could help him out, cause he doesn't want everyone to know, hey, he's leaving his tomb and shit. So, uh, God being an almighty, powerful, ethereal being goes like, all right, son, I got you. And, uh, he turns Jesus black so that he can, he can leave the tomb and not be noticed. Um, and that also gives him the, the physical ability to remove the rock from in front of the tomb. <laughs> So once he gets out, everyone like everyone sees like, oh, it's Jesus, but he's black, and so um, God goes once again, being a clever, um, all all knowing, all, almighty being, turns Jesus into a, a a little a little brown bunny rabbit, you know, and he hops away and he just keeps hopping, 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 and he, and he kept leaves behind a couple eggs, and that's how we celebrate Christmas, you know, we we eat some eggs and. Spread the love of Jesus. Easter, you mean? <laughs> Easter, yeah. <laughs> uh, Dan, I'm not religious, <laughs> but he ends it with a, he ends it with a line from Psalms. <laughs> it's like uh, it's like, and the Easter bunny hoppeth, he hoppeth away, and the eggs he lay, if they're gray, eat them another day. <laughs> 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 and that's how the whole thing ends, and then it just goes into a whole episode of Inbox. It's it's glorious. Oh, like you should watch amazing. Inbox. It's fantastic. I will. Anyways, uh, back to the story. <laughs> uh, but you enjoy that. No. Now. Oh. What? We read that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. You've mixed feelings about the pick. No, you you ended up skipping one on accident. No oh, shit. We'll go back. <laughs> we weren't that far. No, yeah, we weren't. The joyful laughters. You have mixed feelings that, about that the picnic by the lake. You can yeah. you can't feel yourself as part of a joyful youth who are enjoying a nature trip. After having a picnic barbecue, they played a game with a ball in which they formed a circle and tried not to let you catch touch the ball, or not let the ball touch the ground. Whoops! <laughs> I went from, Jesus, I went dude. From, <laughs> they went from a game to keep up to a game of monkey in the middle. Uh, everyone participated in the game except for you. <laughs> so they really wouldn't let you touch the ball. Uh, yeah. But you enjoy na- the nature trip somehow. Uh, as said before, you love nature. You took no, pictures no, of you the love lake. the nature. It doesn't matter. You, you love nature, Dan. <laughs> you love the nature, man. <laughs> All right, you took pictures of the lake with your phone. You don't plan to post the pictures anywhere, though. And there's a huge forest near the picnic area. I mean, no one really wants to see your fucking pictures anyway. You have always found peace in the green of the forest. Which is like half of a forest. Um, <laughs> after the sunset, people began to light the camp- a campfire. There's not much choices in this. <laughs> began to light a campfire. No, there isn't. People around your age generally prefer beer, but you didn't like it. I don't, I don't think anyone around our age enjoys beer. It's not really like a middle-aged man thing. I'm more like a it's vodka garbage, and pink dude. lemonade guy. It's trash. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you feel it overfills your stomach and causes nausea after two cans. Uh, then you're just fucking lightweight. <laughs> Instead of for stronger drinks. Today you bought a bottle of red wine and a, a wine glass. I mean, I, I like beer every once in a while. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, they gather around the campfire. Well, you drank your wine alone. Away from them. Because fuck them. A handsome guy brought his guitar from the bus and began playing it around the fire. While you have finished your second glass of wine, campfire and the moon illuminate the darkness. The sun already has set. There are about five hours for, a pic- for the picnic to end. You'll be going back to the city with the buses. He's playing a calming song. You might join the group, but you also feel a strong urge to have a walk in the dark forest. Will you join the group or go to the forest? Are you going to embrace your goth or be a normal person? Okay, you're being a normal person. <laughs> you approach the group. Two girls notice you. They open a space for you to sit between them. Oh, that's sweet. One of them is blonde, yeah. and the other has long black hair. They wear colorful clothes, contrasting your black outfit. How are you? What are your names? Don't talk to them, or leave them without saying anything. How are you? Blonde girl says, we are fine. <laughs> They never say anything <laughs> else, nor ask how you are. What are your names? Huh. Don't talk to them, 
or leave them without saying anything. What are your names? They probably know your answer. You're probably going to be like, I'm fucking horribly depressed. (laughs) (laughs) The one with the black hair says, we have boyfriends. Say, I only ask your name. (laughs) I hate those (laughs) people. It's just like, hey, how are you doing? uh, My boyfriend boyfriend always asks me how I'm doing. (laughs) It's like, go fuck yourself. I I only (laughs) ask your your names. Oh, so are they... uh... Oh, are they... Is this a boy? Oh, are we a boy? You're trying so so hard, aren't you? The blonde says, and they both laugh. Fuck you, I tried to be nice, leave them, or leave them without saying anything. Leave them without saying anything. Oh, you're going to take the high road. You can stay with the other students <laughs> or go to the forest. Stay or explore the forest? Stay. Nothing interesting happens in the rest of the day. You finish your bottle of wine and you can't make any friends, as usual. When the time comes, you get on the bus and you go back to the city. Yes, it's a lame ending, but at least you're still alive and human. And so human? You okay, this... <laughs> Yeah, that that's gotta be it. Like that's gotta story. be it. This game has three endings. I guess that's right, what this is. Let's do it. You fucking go. Let's go kill game. some bitches. Alright. Play. So we're gonna skip the nice talk and just fucking, get, just fucking gut him. Go okay. to the forest. Wait, join the group. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah, no, no. No, no, it's okay. It's okay. okay. Go to the forest. Trees sure. are high and still green. Oh, yeah, yeah. Cool, we didn't cool. read that. We didn't read that. Alright, I saw All right. this. It's okay. Go to the forest. You stand up and wander back I was gonna s- away from the picnic. Sorry, what? No, I was just going to say, because say you go to the group and then fucking just act super rude and badmouth them and then leave what happens. You oh, know? Yeah, yeah. Or if you stay or whatever. But anyway. You feel the call of the dark forest, so you walk along the path into the forest. The trees are high and still green. Maybe they stay green in all seasons. You don't know. Your field is not uh, your field is not biology. The soil is wet and muddy. It must have ruined. But it must have rained before your group arrived at the lake. You leave boot prints in the soil as you walk. You want to take the next paragraph? There are no clouds in the sky. Full moon and stars illuminate the forest. It's not enough for your eyes. You turn on the flashlight. Uh, um, you turn on the flashlight of your phone. There's an app for it too. I mean, it's normally just in the settings, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you can't clearly see, but notice rabbits in the distance. Naturally, they run from you, as they notice your presence. You begin to think that you might have gone too far away from the picnic, but there is nothing interesting in the picnic area. You somehow feel like the darkness of the forest is your friend. Your only friend. Continue on the path, or turn back to the picnic site. Uh. Continue on the path. Once you stick to a path, you always just go straight for it. You never turn back. No. You continue on the forest path. After a few minutes, you notice footprints on the soil. They seem to belong to a human with bare, big feet. Probably a man. (laughs) The prince cross cross the path. Turn to the picnic site, follow him, or follow his route back. Wait, so... You notice footprints on the soil that they seem to belong to a human? Yeah. Uh, so they, they cross follow... uh, the path. Oh, oh okay. All right. Like got you. Cross. So, right. All right. Um, follow the path, I think. So Don't follow him. Follow him or follow the route? No, the route. You decide to go to the place where he comes from. After a long walk, you find yourself at a hole. There's a lid and a long rope near it. The man clearly comes from the hole. His footprints prove it. When you hold your phone's light to the black hole, you see that there is a ladder inside the hole. You can't see the end of the hole from your position. As a curious and drunk boy, you feel stronger and should ascend. So you are a boy. Do you turn back to the picnic site, Dan, or do you descend? Descend. Yeah, I mean, whatever's out there is probably going to the picnic site to eat your friends. Well, not so far. Oh, facts. As you need to use both your hands to climb down, You put your phone in your jeans pocket, turning the light off. You start to climbing down. After a few seconds, Ben and Stars have no longer illuminated what you see, and your path is pitch black, but the ladder still continues. Finally, if you touch ground, you are so distant from the forest that you can't see the entrance to the hole from where you came. You carefully get on your two feet, yet you can see nothing. Turn the phone lights on. Um, wait, so... Is there any other choice? No. (laughs) No. (laughs) No, I'm just going to sit here forever. (laughs) 
Uh, the place where you are is made of concrete. There is no long corridor in front. There is a long corridor in front of you. It is a narrow, about a meter wide, and is not very high. There are only a few centimeters between your head and the ceiling of the corridor. You can smell a terrible odor. It's a mixture of feces and something you can't understand. Probably dead body. There are three uh, doorless holes uh, along the cor- concrete corridor, making three rooms to discover. You got the first room, the second room, and the third room, or climb up and just leave. Uh, examine the first room. There's an empty wooden coffin. A mirror hangs on the concrete wall. A bloody razor and a black whip stand in front of the mirror. Kinky vampire. In the mirror, <laughs> you can see your reflection and the terror of your face. The place where you... Uh, okay, so it's first room, second room, third room. You already second examined the first room, but... Yeah. You were shocked to find a chained woman in this room. The chain is tied to her ankle. She looks in her 40s. Too weak. Her bones are noticeable. And her pale skin with lots of scars. She's on her knees. She is naked. Her body is slightly hairy. Except for her pubic area. And is quite hairy. Contrasting her hairy body, her head is shaved. She stinks. Not only the smell of feces, but also it looks like she hasn't wa- been washed for years. She screams as, as you point the light towards her. Who are you? Try to save her or run to the ladders. Who are you? She doesn't answer your question. She just yells in despair. Help me. He keeps me here. Try to save her or run to the ladder. Try to save her. You crouch down it to her tied feet. There's no way you can remove the bracelet from her ankle. You also notice that her, pinkly to- her pinky toe is missing. Let me try to find the key or what happened to your toe. What happened to your toe? I keep asking questions, Dan. He made me eat it. You crouched down. Okay, uh, let me try to find the key. Yeah. You try to leave the room, but something you didn't under- uh, you don't understand happens. At the exit of the room, you hit something that wasn't uh, visible for- in front of you. Yes, you saw nothing in front of you, yet you hit something. You fall on the floor. There is an invisible force carries you and repeatedly smashes your head into the wall. You hear the woman screaming as you black out. When you wake up, you find yourself lying on the concrete floor in pitch darkness. By the smell, you understand that you are in the same place. Whoever is, uh, whoever is keeping you captive, he stripped you from all your clothes. You are naked and cold. There's a gag in your mouth. You can't shout and communicate with the woman. She might be gagged too. You stand up and try to walk away, but your ankle is tied with a chain. And you can walk only in the chamber with a meter of radius. Your foot touches a metal bracket. A metal bucket. It's probably where he expects you to defecate. You lose your, uh, you lose all your, you lose your all sense of time here. You lose all your sense of time here. You wait for an unmeasurable amount of time for something to happen. You are thirsty and hungry. Sometimes you hear your phone ring. It is in a different room. The piano melody is It's the Fear by Within Temptation, an ironic name for your situation. They probably noticed that you are missing and trying to reach you, especially your parents. They must have become mad. Of course, you can't answer the call. Finally, you hear footsteps. You can you hear your captor coming to your room. You are unable to see anything. He takes your gag off. Apparently, he has no problem with see, uh, seeing in pitch black. And you hear his voice. Drink. It belongs to an old man. A dominant ordering voice. And feel the tip of a bucket on your lips. Drink, or who are you? Who are you? I am your new master. You better behave well. You are mine now. Now drink, or I won't give it to you once. Uh, or I'll give. I won't give you it once. I won't give you it once again. Drink. Drink. That's the only option. It is water. What is he offering? Uh, you drink it. Not the best water you drink. I could be taken from the lake. But you have no other choices, it seems. After you drink enough, he puts the bucket on the ground. Now he brings something else to your lips. Eat. You are too hungry to refuse him. Eat. You allow him to put the thing in your mouth. It's meat, but raw. You would never eat raw meat, except for sushi. But now you chew it slowly. It is rabbit, he says. You swallow the meat, despite how it disgusts you. After you eat all, he gives you. He puts a gag in your mouth and leaves the room without saying another word. After a while, he comes back as you were laying on the floor. Stand up, he words you. You get on your two feet clumsily. He grabs your body, and you feel two sharp fangs on your neck. He starts draining your blood, and you understand the true nature of your captor. You have no idea how long you've been a prisoner here. You are mostly alone in this room. Doing nothing with a gag in your mouth, he occasionally comes back to feed, feed you and himself. 
Sometimes you hear loud sounds from the other room. He tortures the woman. She screams and begs him to stop, but he doesn't. You hear a whip hit the naked flesh of the woman. But for some reason, he doesn't harm you, only the woman. You haven't seen anything for a long time. You have no idea what he looks like. Sometimes you hear sobbing, but it doesn't belong to the woman, to the captor. He cries loudly for some reason. Some day or night, you can, can't figure out. He shows up and takes off your gag. I've done research about you, learned everything about you. He says your name, shocking you. Dan. <laughs> we, have some, we have some common points. We both like the dark. We are both outcasts, lonely souls in this world of darkness. I will make you an offer, only once, so make your decision wisely. I can make you an immortal like me. You will no longer be in the chains. You will have a life or unlife in the dark, like you have always wanted. Or you can stay as immortal and wait for the day you will die here as my prisoner. I want to be immortal or I want to stay human. These are two different endings, yeah. I assume. Yeah. Um, I want to be an immortal. I feel that, Dan. Very well, he says. Stand up. You stand up and allow your master to embrace you. You feel his fangs on your neck once again. But this time, he doesn't stop. You feel your whole body getting drained. Soon, you lose consciousness. You open your eyes. You find yourself lying in a wooden coffin. By this time, you are able to see. There isn't a single, any single light source in this uh, concrete room. But you see your environment as if you were wearing night vision goggles. You are wearing your old clothes. And also gloves. So you can't see your skin. You have lost your hair. It has shed. Your old hair is on the coffin uh, part where you put your head on, uh, and you feel your face change too. But the most significant change is an unbearable thirst, but not for water. Welcome to the new start, my child. You hear this voice. You look around the room, but you can't see him. There are two coffins and a mirror in the room. They think of that kind of. Uh, they think that our kind can't be seen on the mirror. False. Take a look yourself. You step outside the coffin and walk to the mirror. You are in terror with what you see in the mirror. You don't carry any human face anymore. Your skin has scales, like a snake. Its color is a light gray, almost white. And your eyes are long, and you have pointed tips. Your eyes, your, your, your ears are long and have pointy tips, and your eyes are all red. You slowly open your mouth to see your sharp teeth. You scream, break down, and cry in despair. Then you feel his hand, claw to be exact, on your shoulder. He stands on your back. Now you are able to see uh, his hand. It is scaled like your skin. Look at me, he orders you. And for some reason you can't disobey your master. You, um, you involuntarily look at the mirror to see your immortal entity behind you. His body is tall, naked, and has a hunch, humpback. I think he meant hunchback, but okay. This skin is his skin is almost white and scaled, but his face it is the ugliest thing you've ever seen. It's the embodiment of evils, torture, murder, rape, and envy, envy for everything that is pretty and fair. I will teach you everything I know. Your new and only now parent says with a hideous smile. The end. This game has three endings. All right. All right, so you try it again, and this time I want you to join the group. Mm -hmm. um, and don't talk to them. Um, see what the other students uh, hmm. stay or explore the forest. <laughs> explore. Okay. Right, Continue on the path. Oh shit! <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. I clicked on it accidentally. I misclick all the time. Go to the forest. Um, so I know the the last ending is just the choice between mortal and human, immortal and being human. Yeah. Uh, follow his route back. Uh, we could also follow him. But true. We'll do that later. And descend. Uh, descend. See nothing. Yeah. yeah. Examine the third room. Oh yeah. You see a chain tied to the wall, and it's a bracket at the end. There are two metal buckets. Both are empty. You notice a metal key on the floor. Ooh. Take the key. Take the key. See him in the second Go to the second room. room. Try to save Try her. Try to save her. Run with her. Run with her. You hold a woman's hand and you rush towards the lighter. Your other hold, hand holds her phone so you can light in the corridor. But as you reach the lighters, you can feel something hits your stomach. You can't understand it. You see nothing in front of you. 
but still, there's something. Your phone falls on the ground. You can't see anything. The woman screams, oh no, he came. Yeah, that's what she said. <laughs> you feel something uh, grabs <laughs> you and smashes your head into the concrete walls. You black out. Now when you wake up, okay, this is the same thing. Drink. Eat. Stand up. I don't want to say human. Suddenly you feel a sharp pain on your shoulders. You hear a loud sound of a whip. He whips you continuously, feeling zero empathy for the agony you feel on your bare skin. You could have been a predator like me. You chose to be a fucking toy. You are mine to torment. Do you understand, idiot? He shouts at you. You chose You chose to be a fuck toy. Oh. <laughs> That's uh, completely different. <laughs> he kicks you and he's sobbing on the floor. You can do nothing but hope that sweet death will come soon, as he rapes you furiously. But it never comes. Okay. So oh, on. wait a minute. It's a double entendre. Anyway. Um, uh, man, so it's an infinite, infinite loop. loop. You're doomed to live the, uh, in a depressing Monday. Oh, fuck, a Monday. Which keeps repeating itself, no matter what you do. You wake up on the same day, even if you commit suicide. Can you keep your morals and mental health when nothing you do is permanent? And why are you stuck in this infinite loop? Play to find it out. This one sounds interesting. But there's a Satan fucking ox skull on the fucking TV behind it. You wake up in your bed. Sorry. You wake up in your bed. You wish you were dead, in fact. You should have been dead. You committed suicide lots of times before. But no, there is no afterlife for you. Only the repeat of the same day. Not only do you hate your never-ending day, but also you hate yourself. You have an obligation to work. You hate your job in a small cubicle in a cold office. Um, maybe you do something crazy today and spend the day at home or kill yourself. You are in your bedroom. It is a rainy morning. There is a wooden table near your bed. On the table, there, are, there is an alarm clock and a picture of you and your ex-wife. There is a drawer beneath the table. Look at the window, look at the alarm clock, look at the picture, open the drawer, go to the bathroom. Open the drawer. You open the drawer. There is only one important item there. Your 9mm pistol. That has a capacity of 17 rounds. Pick up the pistol? Yeah, I pick up the pistol. Alright. Um, um, look out the window. Shoot yourself. <laughs> look out the window. No, oh, man. Wait, is that really an option? <laughs> yeah, it is. It's at the bottom. Oh my god. You are at the 13th top floor of the apartment building. The sky is covered with gray clouds. Its grayness, <laughs> its gayness, is reflected upon everything <laughs> you see. People are walking in a hurry. Some of them don't even have umbrellas on this rainy morning. There are no green trees, only high concrete structures. There aren't a trace of happiness out there. And just shoot out the window. At alarm. The <laughs> alarm clock. Your digital alarm clock shows 7 a.m. Monday with its green LCD lights. It's the exact time you wake up each repeating, uh, each repeating morning. <laughs> and it's always Monday whenever you wake up. It's just your alarm clock's broken. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, I'm like messed up. You shoot yourself and then you never wake up. <laughs> I look at your picture. I go to the bathroom. Yeah, I look, I look at the picture. This is the photograph shows you uh, with your ex wife at the beach when you were on the, uh, your honeymoon. She had long black hair, brown eyes, and a pretty face. Uh, she was the prettiest woman for you when you were together. You both look happy in this frame with sincere smiles, but it was past. You feel a horrible guilt looking at this picture. Go to, the Go to the bathroom. You're in the bathroom. Looking at the mirror, you see that you need to shave. Your beard grew a few millimeters. Bad enough for your work. If you wish, you can scar your face with a razor or cut your wrist to commit suicide because you wake up with an intense self-hate each morning. Shave your beard, cut your face, cut your wrist in the bathtub, or go, go to the living room. Shave your beard. You shave your beard. You hate how you look when you don't have facial hair. Even your mother says that you look like an egg with it this way. Go to the living room or do one of these things. Cut your face. Oh, are you serious? Okay. If you get the razor and start cutting your face with the self-hatred, blood drips out of each scar. At the end of a five minute of a masochist action, you leave your face uh, with so many scars that your face looks red. Ugh. Go to the, go to the living room. Okay. You're in the living room now. It's just no, it has no action to anything. <laughs> um, 
there are your old television and worn sofa in front of it. Your dis your dispersed suit on is on the sofa. You can either go to work or spend your whole day watching television. You'll probably get fired if you choose it. It doesn't matter, dude. You, you wake up the same exact fucking morning every single fucking day. <laughs> Wait, there are your old television and it's worn sofa in front of it. Sorry, I, I kind of zoned out. You can watch television. You either go to work. Or shoot yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Go to work. <laughs> okay. You wear your suit and head off to work. It's rainy, but you have lost your umbrella. You get wet until you reach the subway station. It takes about 15 minutes to reach here. That would hurt with all those cuts. You carry your gun in the back oh, of your yeah. trousers. It's hidden by your jacket. While descending the stairs of the subway station, you pass by two teenagers smoking cigarettes. They're almost 13 years old. The kids are afraid of you because of what you did on your face. Oh, yeah. You never wanted to have kids. They would probably be like those teenagers who began smoking at this early age. You took a sterilization operation a few years ago, but your wife didn't know about it. Uh. People in the subway are uh, surprised and horror. You probably have never seen someone with a cut on his face this way. You can't expect people to react normally to what you've done. Kill everyone, shoot yourself, or wait for the train to come. Wait for the train to come. Okay, you're going to be sane. <laughs> you don't want to get five-star GTA running around. No. <laughs> After ten minutes, you see the approaching lights of the subway uh, in the tunnel. Get on the subway, jump the, jump on the rails, kill everyone, shoot yourself. Get on the subway. You're just going to have a normal day after cutting your face up. <laughs> that <laughs> That's snaps. pretty much it, man. It's 15 minutes to arrive at the ugly gray skyscraper that you call the office building. At the entrance of your office, at the 13th floor of the skyscraper, like in the 13th floor of your apartment building, you see your boss. He is the man you hate oh. most. An overweight, bald man with a black mustache. You always wanted to murder him, but you always controlled your anger somehow. Because once you react in anger, you lose control of yourself. He stares at you. Uh, go to your cubicle or go to your, your boss. Yeah. You sure you don't cubicle. want to self-indulge? <laughs> yeah, dude. I'll, I'll, I'll go to my cure. Okay, well, we can still kill your boss. It's okay. <laughs> As you were about to go to your cubicle, your boss stops you. What the fuck have you done to your face? I knew you were a sick fuck. But this is too much. Fuck off. I don't want you here in my office anymore. You're fired. Go home or kill your boss. Or shoot yourself. Right in front of him. <laughs> Dan's like, what the fuck are these options? <laughs> hey, Dan. Tell I. Okay, you're still here. I'm guessing you're busy doing something. I'll wait. I'll be patient. How fucked is this, though? Damn. Super depraved. Oh, Danny's texting me for some reason. Now, his Discord's bugged. I'm gonna... Uh, Alt tab and this. Um, we're gonna start a call up. Hey, can you hear me now? Hello. There we go. All right. All right. Jesus. <laughs> hey. Back to the game. So back to you, killing back your to boss, your shooting cool. yourself, or going home. Because after you go to your cubicle, uh, the boss says, what the fuck have you done in your face? And then tells you to fuck off. And he doesn't want you in his office anymore. And he says, like, fuck. Sick, but... You want to kill okay. him? And you want to go home? Uh, so yeah, suffering. kill your boss. You point your gun at the, your disgusting boss. He looks at you and your gun in disbelief. <laughs> you shoot your boss at the head and he falls on the floor. Of course they arrest you for doing that. They put you in custody in the police station. You're in a cold concrete cell. At the evening... Uh, a police officer comes into your cell. You have a visitor, he says. A woman with a long red coat approaches the bars, but the most interesting part is, is her wearing a Venice mask on her face. Uh, her face is not visible, but you recognize the woman by her body and black hair. She's your ex-wife. She turns to the policeman. Leave me alone with him. She orders the man. He leaves the room. You are alone with your ex-wife. I am sure that you were surprised to see me once again, she says. I am surprised about one thing, too. You have finally done something that you wish to do. It's your only success in life. Your only success in life is to take a life. She takes off her mask. 
There was no face under the mask. This is skull remained from a rotten body. Now her voice echoes in the concrete cell. You are a murderer. No matter what you say, no matter what you do, you can't change what happened. Huh. You wake up in your bed, and you wish you were dead. In fact, you should have been dead. You committed suicide lots of times before, but no, there is n no afterlife for you. Only to repeat it the same day. Not only do you hate your never-ending day, but also yourself. You have no obligation to work. You hate your job in a small cubicle in the old uh, cold office. Maybe you'd do something crazy today and spend it. So it's just repeating the same thing. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, open the drawer. Grab the gun. Okay. And shoot yourself. You point the muzzle at your 9mm pistol inside your head and pull the trigger. You wake up in your bed. Okay. Alright, now grab the gun again. Um, <laughs> shoot yourself again. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, go to the bathroom. Cut your wrists in the bathtub. <laughs> you put your pistol in front of the mirror as you don't need it anymore. You pick up the razors and <laughs> close off and step inside the tub. After sitting inside the tub, you start cutting your wrists horizontally. Soon you start to lose your consciousness alongside with your blood. The bathtub gets filled with blood. You wake up in your bed. Um, okay, so grab the gun, and we're gonna go and kill everyone at the subway station. Oh, God. <laughs> Alright, you can go to the bathroom. You can go to the living room. Go to work. Kill everyone. Yep. Pull out your gun, people look at uh, you with horror. And your phone rings. Yes, despite you being in a subway station, the caller's name is not huh. nice. But you had never seen someone with uh, that name in your phone. Answer the call. The person who calls you starts speaking before you can say hello to him. Do you know who I am? Ask the deep male voice. Yes or no? Yes. It is good that you finally know me. For you are stuck with me forever. And then he hangs up. Uh, time turns back to normal. But everybody you wanted to kill forms a circle around you and starts wa walking at you. Your gun malfunctions. You can't shoot anyone. You feel your pulse beat weakening. You are blacking out as the people approach you. You fall to the ground unconsciously. You wake up in your bed. Uh, yeah, okay. So, so let's grab the gun and go to kill everyone again, but this time say no. no. Right. I am your captor and punisher. This is exactly why you're being punished. Then he hangs up. Just normal, uh, sort of okay, thing. so it's the same, same thing. It's just yeah, it's just he All tells right. you who he is. Let's let's spend the day watching TV. Okay. Grab the gun if you want, but and go to the bathroom, go to the living room, spend the day watching TV. You turn on your old television. You saw the stuff in front of it. First thing you see here is the news. The news about a war going on in a distant part of the planet. You see bombed homes and dead children in the debris under the debris. <laughs> uh, immigrants are trying. The debrises. Yeah, the debrises. Uh, immigrants are trying to flee on overcrowded boats. Turn on the next channel or turn off the television. Next channel. Let's see how many channels they have. The Second channel airs a beauty contest, but for little kids. You see the little kids with makeup and their paint painted faces disgust you. The jury consists of other men. Ugh. Next channel. Third channel airs an advertisement about new antidepressants. It shows a woman running with happiness in a field of grass and flowers. You notice that the grass and flowers are plastic. Turn to the next channel. Next channel. Uh. Now you see something that you never expect to see on television. It's a man in a white suit, and his head is a gold skull. The man or demon with a gold skull gazes into your soul. He asks you, you were stuck in an infinite loop. Do you remember why this is happening to you? No or yes? Yes. Then let me remind you something. You can't actually redeem yourself, but you have to find it. Uh, you can actually redeem yourself, but you have to find it. How? how. The television screen fades away. What will you do? Take sleeping pills and sleep. Shoot yourself. Cut your wrist in the bathtub. Take sleeping pills and sleep. Your sleeping pills uh, have been your best friend. They, they make you sleep instantly. You can like them um, more if you made the... If they made you wake up to a different day, though, you take two pills and go to sleep. Okay, so let's let's watch the TV this time now. Right.
You can grab the gun if you want, but... That's fine. We will... Go to the bathroom. Go to the living room. Spend a bunch of TV. Next channel. Next channel. Next channel. No. Then let me show you. Then you won't like it. Television shows your ex-wife face. She is crying in despair. And I'm Ella Peter. Pistol gets in the frame. It's pointed at her. The trigger is pulled and she's dead. The camera now shows the man who pulled the trigger. You. You can see yourself cry like a baby. You killed her. But you still loved her. Television screen fades away. What will you do? Shoot yourself. Even though you didn't grab the gun. <laughs> yeah. Shoot yourself. Uh, Alright. Now let's figure out how to redeem ourselves. Let's go, um, let's, let's, let's go to the bathroom. Let's actually shave our beard. Mm-hmm. Let's go to the living room. Don't even take the gun with you. Let's go to work. Yep. Wait for the train to come. Uh, get on the subway. Go to our cubicle. You get in front of your old computer. Your monitor has a big tube that you hate. You start working on your shitty duties. You do repetitive things. Those should have been done by an automatic system. Your only break is looking at the social media. It is actually forbidden in the office, but you have, a, you have found a back door. You see a picture of an old friend of yours at the beach. He is with your ex-wife and her new boyfriend, who's dead probably, like her. You had an ex-wife and her boyfriend so that you wouldn't see them, them once again. But it doesn't work if uh, they are shown in the same in another person's photo. The couple looks so happy. Together. Facts. She looks happier than this time. Uh, than how she was with you. Nothing interesting happens during the rest of the day. You feel quite sleepy. You won't need sleeping pills now. You fall asleep and you find yourself in a dream. You never had any dreams during this time. You got stuck in the loop. In this dream, you find yourself at the entrance of an apartment with your suit on. It's nighttime. Apparently, you have arrived home from a tiring day in work. No lights are turned on in the apartment, but candle lights are coming from the kitchen. You can hear the voice of your wife coming from the candle lit kitchen. Welcome home. Uh, honey, welcome. Uh. She's standing in the kitchen with a pretty smile on her face. She's wearing a red dress. Two candles are lit in the kitchen desk. Two dishes of spaghetti uh, bolognese. <laughs> uh, a bottle of wine are on the, is also on the desk. You were surprised because you'd never seen her this alive since the infinite loop began. While you were able to say nothing, she holds your hands. I have great news to tell you. What is it, honey? What is it? I am pregnant. You remember that you had a sterilization option before without letting your wife know. A tantrum is about to overwhelm you. The situation makes you unable to say anything. Try to get calm. Try to get calm. Try to get calm. You sit in the chair trembling with anger. Darling, what is wrong? She points at her. She puts her palm on your face. You explain her the operation. You cheated on me. You cheated on me. She is shocked to hear your accusation. What? No. I have never done this. What makes you think so? Explain her the operation. Explain her the operation. She listens to you carefully as you explain how you got the an operation that makes you unable to have. Oh. Uh, shit. It's okay. She she pretty much tried to defend herself. I kind of got a glimpse okay. of it. She was like, but you're the only man. You know? Yeah. Something that you didn't expect starts happening. You start feeling that you are walking up from the waking up for the dream. Waking. You aren't in your bed now. You are still in the kitchen, but as an entity without a body. Is it possible to say at which point you are in a three-dimensional space? Your presence covers all the kitchen and you see everything. You see the lying bodies of two dead people, your wife and yourself. The gun is in your hands, pointed at your head. So you not only killed your wife, but you killed her kid, which is kind of shitty. You feel yeah. the presence of a second entity, but it's not your wife. It's a demon or angel that kept you in the loop. You hear his voice. Do you know what? She was right. She never cheated on you. The operation wasn't successful. You are at the end of the road that goes down the re to redemption. The loop is broken. Now follow me. I'll show you where souls go. The end. That's nice and also wow. fucked up. That's like the best one so far. Oh yeah. All right, Ouija's the last one. You were a single father. Your wife Linda passed away while giving birth to your son a year ago. You will be able to use a Ouija board uh, in contact with an entity who claims to be Linda in the story. Ouija. New Jersey. Nice. <laughs>
representing. <laughs> Yo. I haven't been there in three years, but fuck yeah. <laughs> you were a single father. Your wife Linda passed away a year ago at childbirth. Your son's name is Mark. He's a cute baby with blue eyes, and he got, he got it from his mother. As expected, you're in agony with the loss of your wife. Mark is the only thing that you hold that you can hold on to. All that matters. You have been in love with Linda since the first time you saw her. She was so pretty. You wanted to be with her forever. It still surprises you that you have such a charming, uh, to have such a charming woman to fall in love with you. Um, during Linda's pregnancy, you lost your job at some point while having debts. She supported you in every way she could. Not only was she your wife, but also your best friend. You found another job after Mark was born and Linda died. But of course. It doesn't make you happy. Uh, it doesn't make you a happy man when you have lost your best friend and wife. Looking in Mark's blue eyes gives you all the strength to go on as a single father. You see his future. You see the future in his eyes. In the past, the past when you were happy with your family, despite everything falling apart, you would lose everything if you lost Mark. Another reason that ma what made Linda and Mark so significant is you had lost your parents too. Basically, you have no family members left except for your son. Nobody to consult for things that you need to talk with a family member. Linda's parents, you don't see those assholes anymore. They don't. They have done. Uh, they have done wrong to you and Linda. It's a foggy morning. You are taking a walk in an isolated green forest, which is close to the suburb you live in. You can't see anything but fog beyond five meters. There's a single path, and you are walking it. You know that the path leads to a lake. You have been there countless times. There's nobody else you can see here in this forest. But somehow, you feel that something waits you, awaits for you at the end of the path. Will you walk along the path, Dan? Yeah, I'll walk along the path. You reach a lake, and you encounter a woman who looks uncannily uh, familiar, sitting at the side of a lake. She's turning her back to you. You see that she has blonde hair and a black dress, so familiar. She slowly turns back and faces you with a smile on her beautiful face. She is nobody but Linda, completely alive. Did you miss me, darling? Linda, is that you? Linda, how is this possible? Uh, I miss you so much. How is this possible? All that we see or seem is but a dream within a dream. Question mark. <laughs> She holds your hands. Buy a Ouija board. I will talk to you through that. You know what a Ouija, uh, you know Ouija is pronounced Ouija, or Ouija board is. It is a board with letters on numbers on it that you can use to talk with spirits. Okay, I think everyone knows what a Ouija board is, jackass. Um, a strong wind starts blowing. In a blink of an eye, her flesh tore, turned into ashes. The harsh wind carries the black ashes away, leaving a grim skeleton standing with you. You find yourself holding the hands of a skeleton who looks into your very soul with carved eyes on her skull. You wake up. It was a dream, a repeating one. You keep having this dream every night. It started a few days ago. It's a Monday morning now. Oh, God. <laughs> and you oh, no. Your it's winter, but still sunny. After getting off the bed, you look like you look at yourself in the mirror hanging on the wall, more like hung on the wall. You look worn out. Check on Mark. Your horse has two stories. Your house has two stories. Sorry. <laughs> Nay, I will tell you two tales. <laughs> Your horse has two stories. I'm an idiot. <laughs> Your house has two stories. The bedrooms are at the, your bed. The bedrooms are at the upper one. You walk into Mark's bedroom, which is next to yours. Trying not to make a sound, you slowly open the wooden door of the bed bedroom. Your son sleeps peacefully in his cradle. You would expect a one-year-old to make noises all the time, but Mark is not such a boy. He rarely cries. He has been a happy boy. Good boy. <laughs> the bedroom walls are painted in a calming tone of blue. A circle of toys are hung on the upon the cradle. Cute figures of lion, sun, red cat, and the moon are all the parts of these, this installment. There is a big poster of a yellow baby bird on the wall. You change Mark's diapers like you always do in the morning. 
After you complete changing the diapers, the doorbell rings. It's probably the caretaker, Isabella. She comes every morning at this hour. Open the door. You get on stairs and open the door. Sorry. Good morning, sir, says Isabel. She's a woman in her 20s with curly black hair and brown eyes. She steps into your house. When she steps into your horse. <laughs> your daily routine start. Your daily routine starts. I'm having a fucking stroke. Jesus. Your daily routine starts with uh, making the breakfast while Isabel takes care of Mark. You go to work after breakfast, unless it's the weekend. Isabel's wa- um, Isabel walks into the kitchen, opens the fridge, and picks up the formulated milk for babies without mothers. Or babies who can't drink breast milk, because not all people who drink fucking formula don't have mothers. Anyways, <laughs> talk about the dreams, or don't talk about the dreams. Really fucking two-sided coin here. <laughs> yeah, um... Don't talk about the dreams. Yeah, don't give her your fucking personal life. Isabella climbs up the stairs to take care of Mark. You are hungry. You need to make breakfast. You like listening to music on the radio with, uh, while making breakfast. Will you turn on the radio today? Yeah. Alrighty. Turn on the radio. The playing song. It's going to be like your song together or whatever. The playing song. Yeah. Uh, is Sunny from Boney M. Sunny, as your day in my life was filled with rain. Sunny, you look, you smiled at me, and really is eased the pain. The dark days are gone, and the bright days are here. My sunny one shines so sincere. Sunny one so true, I love you. You like that song? It kind of reminds you of the happy times you had, Flinda. You make yourself an omelet and a hot cup of coffee. That's your daily routine. After you finish breakfast, it's time to leave the house. Will you buy a Ouija board? You can go to a toy store and buy it before going to work, or you can refuse to buy it, thus refusing to contact what you see in your dreams. It doesn't necessarily buy it. Mean you're gonna you're gonna contact what's not definitely not Linda. Okay. Yeah. Despite it being a winter day, it's not cold outside. There's a toy store you know. This is where you buy Mark's toys. You remember seeing a Ouija board there. Did you know Toys R Us actually did have fucking Ouija boards? Yeah, dude, I know. My I mean, sisters used to have one. Dude. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't take long to reach the store. You enter the store and start it's searching stupid. the board. Yeah, it is pretty stupid. And start searching for the board among the color, uh, colorful toys. You find a box that looks quite different from the other's toys. It doesn't look cute. Not something you'd buy for your kid. It's a grim-looking Ouija board. Buy the board or don't buy the board. Be stupid or not uh, be stupid. By the board. Okay. Be stupid. <laughs> uh, you, pick up the box of the, you pick up the box of the Ouija board and move to the cash point. The cashier is a brunette young woman. She gets surprised to see the box. Uh, you want to buy that? What will you use it for, if I may ask? I keep seeing my deceased wife in my dreams, or <laughs> I think it's none of your business. <laughs> oh, I keep seeing my deceased wife oh, yeah. in my dreams. This is the person to tell. Definitely not the person you see every day. Yeah. I have to warn you. In my religion, dead doesn't talk with us. There are things that claim they are souls of humans, but in truth, they are not. They are evil. Don't buy the board. I s I'll still buy it. You might be right. I won't buy it. I'll still buy <laughs> it. Fucking epic foreshadowing. <laughs> yeah, right? Okay. As you wish. But if you're going to use it, don't use it by yourself. You'll never ask when or how someone will die. And never ask when or how someone will die. So you pay you pay the uh, the board's price and buy it. You put it in a plastic bag with the logo of the toy store, and you go to the office. As an accountant, you think that you have a dull job. Nothing interesting happens during the work. You have no friends to talk to. After the shift ends, you're ready to go home. Darkness has fallen. Are you going to ask Isabel to join you? Uh, knowing Isabel's at home, you ring the bell when you arrive home. Welcome, she says with a smile after opening the door. Her shift ends. When you come home, she's got ready to head off. Mark is sleeping peacefully. He has just started sleeping, as Paul says before leaving the house. You can risk to ask her. Uh, you can ask her to assist you in the seance. Ask her to join you. Smart. Sorry, I can't do that. You mustn't either. Isabella leaves. You are alone with Mark now. Before starting the seance, you climb the stairs and check on Mark. He looks so happy and peaceful while sleeping. You close the door and descend the stairs. You'll use the board in your living room. 
there's a table that you can use there. And you heard it's best to turn off the lights before talking to the Ouija board. So you get a candle from the kitchen and light it. Then you turn off the lamps. So the only, the only thing that enlightens the room is the candle. You pull the wooden board from its box and place it on the table. Then you get a planchette, which is a little wooden part with the eye hole in it, which is the part <laughs> that you can put uh, your finger on. Seven HD is supposed to move the planchette when you do it with your fingers on it. Are you ready? Yeah. Are you so ready. Oh, fuck me. Oh, uh, cool. Linda, Linda, Linda. Say it, Dan. <laughs> yeah, go for it. No, no, say it. Linda, Linda, Linda. Keep your finger on the planchette. Oh. Oh, fuck this. H. <laughs> E R E. Yeah, here. Are you really Linda? Will you bring Mark up well? Will I bring Mark up well? Are you watching us from there? Uh, what do you want to tell me? Our next page. Are you really Linda? Okay. Oh, fuck. Liar. I this every time. Yes. Will I bring Mark up well? Uh, what do you want to tell see. me? Okay, I was gonna say, it said never ask about future events. Right. Hi. Hick. <laughs> Hick. -p. If. The fuck? S J. Random shit. Wait. Is this an anagram? No way, there's only one vowel. Yeah. But... Unless it starts with S H. <laughs> or it ends in I. There's no way. I don't know. True. Um, what do you want to tell me again? Yeah, try it again. Okay. I'm just going to do the same thing. Just going to do the you... same shit. Oh, no. Um. Um, T, J, what do you want to tell me? Yeah, one more time. Q, K, K, F, what if this was actually an electronic Ouija board? A. <laughs> I, I, um, are you watching us from there? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, will you bring, Mar will you bring Mark up all? Or what do you want to tell me? Or next page. <laughs> next page. Okay. Why did you return? What does this, what does moon mean? What do you want to tell me? What do you want from me? Previous page or next page? Why did you return? Moon. Okay. So ask what does moon mean, I guess. Yeah. Just brings it to moon again. LP. Oh boy, yes. I don't like that. A. This is definitely, um, some, wait, so L, N, P, R, uh, might not work. Maybe it's offset by just one. So M, P would be cute now. So, uh, I'm sorry, I'm drifting out of sleep, um, drifting in and out of consciousness. What do you think this could be, though? Because it's definitely, it's definitely like a, a, a code or something. Uh, what do you want from me? What does the moon mean? Uh, why did you return? Uh, what, what do you want? From what do you want? Dan, this does not intrigue you enough to keep you awake. 
moon is moon again. Oh, uh, that's that means that Ouija board. <laughs> okay. Now I'll go to the next page. Yeah, do that. Should I move on with my life and meet new woman? Why did I? Why did you leave us? Are you peaceful? Should I move on with my life? Okay. No. Well, thanks, you fucking bitch. <laughs> Why'd you leave us, or are you peaceful? So what is the sun mean? means gold, and moon means silver. All spiritism is descended from the ancient science of alchemy, which worked by separating substances into pure and pure physical forms. The idea was to wear out the structures of matter until it could be assembled into something else. For that reason, up to this very day, we call liquors and the entities you summon through the board by the same name. Spirits. That makes sense. But it doesn't really answer my question. It means silver? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I don't know what that means. She came Me neither. Through silver? Are you peaceful, or why did you leave us? Are you peaceful? No. Damn. Oh, also, uh, um... What happened when you said, should I move on with my life? Um, she said no. Okay. Why did you leave us? Why, why did you leave us, yeah. Dick. Did, did not. Didn't. Did not. Alright, why are you restless? Yeah. Silver. Next page. When did we get married? Uh, yeah. Nineteen seventy-eight. Okay. Got it right. What's your favorite color? Right. All right. Mm. When will we be together? No, oh, that's don't do that. when we die. Yep. It's the next page. Yep. When will I die? How will I die? When will I die? <laughs> How will Mark die? Or goodbye? Next page. <laughs> What's goodbye or previous page? Oh, oh, um, hmm. Goodbye, I guess. Yeah, next page. Goodbye. Yeah, next page. So you're in the seance. The planchette stops moving. You couldn't get any decent answers from the spirit. Was it even Linda's spirit? You can't be sure. The spirit doesn't show any physical activity after the seance in your house, but the mirrors, you feel something gazes upon you whenever you look at the mirrors in your bedroom and bathroom. You feel the presence watches you through the mirrors, and this presence is not benevolent. Uh, you are not the only one feeling it. Mark always cries whenever you bring him near a mirror. He gets scared by something he sees in the mirror. You had to remove the mirror from your bedroom in order to, uh, to be able to sleep. Apparently, buying the weird because he doesn't, doesn't cry. Yeah, it opens the doorway for entities. But honestly, this is not a problem an exorcist can't solve. There are far worse things that could have happened to you and Mark. The end. The story has three endings. Do you want to end it there, or do you want to keep going? I'm way too tired to keep going. All right. So that'll be the end. That was a good story. Yeah, indeed. Um, so I guess we'll, we'll end the recording, we can talk for a couple minutes, and you can go to sleep. Yeah, dude. Alright, so that's the end of, uh, our story time. Maybe we'll do some, like, uh, some, like, shit posts, like some, some copy pastas or something. I mean, time. everything we do is a shit post. I mean, but, let's be honest, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah dude. Alright, so we'll do that next right. time. Alright, so we'll stop Great. recording. Goodbye, everyone. Bye.